Welcome to episode four of Hashbang TV. I think I'm actually getting a bit more confident doing this now, don't you think? Yeah, it's becoming easier. I think I'm getting better. Mm, yeah. <laughs> we'll let them be the judge of that. Okay. <laughs> so, so this week we have uh, Anthony from Rebo joining us, so that's going to be good. Very interesting, yeah. So we'll look forward to that. Yeah, and then this weekend you're off to Austin in the United yeah. States. You're going to South by Southwest. I'm going to Texas for the first time. I think, really? You've yeah. never been before? Never Do been Do they know Texas. you're coming? Mm, probably not, no. Wow. So I think in, in, the, uh, in the business they call it South by. South by. Wow. Yeah. How exciting. That's like, that's become the mecca, hasn't it? The oh, yeah. annual event. The, I'm, I'm jealous. It certainly seems to be the place to go if you're in digital. Uh, and you know creative kind of stuff so there's the interactive um, festival okay and then there's a music and film festival as well and so do they run in parallel or are yeah, they I, I think the film with... overlaps with interactive and then okay. music is on the end wow. so I'm only out there for like four days okay uh, for the interactive but yeah I mean it's going to be amazing hopefully I, I think very different experience to kind of uh, what's just gone is Mobile World Congress yeah, yeah, yeah. which is kind of like a very much a kind of telco kind of show um, obviously planned right down to the minute in terms of kind of uh meetings so there's you know not a lot of free time to just go and experience yeah so you know the thing i'm really excited about south by is just going there and kind of taking it in and absorbing it and, and it's run more like a festival festival yeah. of ideas and things like that you always hear about companies breaking you know it was twitter that that year or yeah, whatever it was. Square yeah. As well, yeah yeah yeah, as well. yeah a couple of years later wasn't it it's was like the big kind of viral explosion yeah. of one thing so yeah I tell you the one thing though, the one thing that's kept the whole thing sane for me is uh, when we decided to go, um, trying to do the research about what to go see, you know, what the hot uh, kind of uh, seminars were going to be. Oh, it was a nightmare. The amount of information was just overwhelming and you couldn't actually find anything helpful. But I, you know, Lanyard? Yeah. The kind of events uh, site that's based here in London. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they have the most amazing uh, microsite for South by Southwest. So you, um, obviously Lanyard, when you register, you kind of connect your Twitter and yeah, Facebook accounts. Yeah. So what it does is it searches all your friend lists and your follow lists, tells you where they're going to be. So you can kind of immediately get, you know, trusted recommendations on what to go see. Yeah. If you want to go and hang out with people you already know, it's just genius. So um, how many people from your social network connections then are there? Is I think it, is about it like, 60 or 70. Wow. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a bit like, so for me, that number is Mobile World Congress. Yeah. You know, there are 60 or 70 people there that I know reasonably well. Yeah. Um, and I look out for them. And, and, and Twitter's become that for, for me at Mobile World Congress. Yeah. So it sounds like you're going to have a similar number. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think... Uh, Let's go see, and obviously I'll come back and uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it on the show in terms of you know what yeah. the highlights were. I'd like to, I'd like at Lanyard. I thought they were a Brighton company, not a London company. So it'd be interesting to find out. Actually, we'd love to have them on the show. Yeah, we'll talk. Um, we'll try and get them on. And and I wonder if they've put a lot. If they put a lot of extra effort into supporting South by Southwest this year, and it, is that yeah. the thing that might become you know it, it's it another looks layer? Like it. And, yeah, oh, without, right. without having spoken to them directly. I mean, it looks like they've obviously put a lot of effort into the design of the microsite and, and getting all the logic behind the back end. So they've got a dedicated microsite yeah, for South yeah. by Southwest. Yeah, so you, oh, go wow. to, uh, you go to sxsw.lanyard.com. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's all dedicated to South by. Brilliant. Well, it'd be nice to see if they get that, if they are the company that people talk about. Because it's often a tool that is used in the management of South mm. by Southwest that becomes the... You know that becomes the talked about product of, the, yeah. of, of that year South by so yeah uh, be all right be great if it was a London company wouldn't it yeah or absolutely. a UK company we should yeah, say yeah yeah, yeah. Um, brilliant so we should go talk to them we should, yeah it'd be, it'd be great and and you'll report back hmm. uh, in the next episode of Hashbang TV um, about your experience of going to your first ever South by Southwest yeah totally so we're really excited today to be joined by Anthony from Rebo. Thank you. Thanks for making the trip up from Brighton. My pleasure. Appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for coming. So tell us a bit. So your name is Anthony Rebo. The company is called Rebo. You founded it with your brother. Correct. So what can you say exactly what it is that you do? Five years ago, we set out to create a um, mobile design agency that created software tools that enabled the enabled behaviours for everyday people. So there's many, many people who get excited about uh, the, the, the things on the edge of the tech curve, um, but what really interested us was 
putting the, these software tools in the hands of everyday people. So you started, five, you started five years ago, yes. it's obviously grown, so five yep. years ago was before the iPhone, before it Android was devices, yes. so you've seen this, this growth in, in, in proper immersive applications. Yep. Um, how many people, how many employees are you now up to? We have the fine number of 11 employees. Wow, that's nice. Yes. So it's small and neat, we call it a family. So, so tell us, so, so 11 of you, Brighton, mm. five years old, mm. how, how have you kind of grown? How's the company kind of matured over those five years? You know, what did it look like then and what does mm. it look like now? Yeah, good question. Um, so obviously two co-founders five years ago, the two brothers, Rebo, thankfully actually working with companies like Orange uh, from, from the, the onset, allowed us to build up our bank balances to a certain point where we could take the risk and start to grow. We've always had organic growth uh, over the five, five years. Mm. We've never taken investment from anyone else. We still own the company 100% between two brothers. Wow. Um, so just trying to keep things pure and uh, you know, a key thing has always been that user experience. Um, so hiring people that were actually similar to Jerome and myself in the sense of being hybrids. We come from a, a design background and also quite a technical mm. background. Mm. So um, if I were to talk about a developer, what we'd look in a developer, we'd expect them to be coding their methods, coding their lines, and just considering that user experience. Uh, and then from the design point of view, uh, we expect our designers to be able to, to be able to build or to, to want to build, to want to code, to prototype. One thing I learned in the, the mobile industry very early on is that when you're creating these ideas, you need to get your idea onto a device, uh, so embody the idea onto a device as quickly in the kind of the product development cycle as, as possible, because that's the point at which you think I'm on the right I'm on the right path, but not. So, uh, but you both own 50% each as, yes. as brothers, um, but you I might own 51. No, no, I, I own You didn't specify earlier. Um, but what I mean to say is that you haven't brought in a non-exec director to get any kind of more senior advice. You know, you're both mm. quite young guys to, yeah. to be running a company with 11 employees. Um, so how have you managed to kind of grow in, in the last couple of years? I'll just go back five years ago to, to right at the start of, of Rebo where we realized that we had a good skill set in design, a good skill set, a good understanding of technical areas, mm. um, but our, our weakest point was the, the running of a business, the business knowledge. So from day one, we wanted to go out and find a mentor. Okay. Um, for one reason or another, we, we didn't find one. Uh, it took us four years to find one. So really what that brought to us uh, was a little bit of pressure, uh, which, we, which we weren't used to. We were used to, as creatives, running a company creatively, um, but bringing Steve on board really helped us kind of focus on some key areas of the business. I mean, obviously we met before um, you did this Tesco deal, right? Yeah. But I, guess, I mean, from the outsider perspective, it felt like the kind of the big kind of tipping point for you guys was suddenly this kind of small uh, agency from um, Brighton yep. has suddenly landed a global giant like Tesco. Yep. Um, I mean, I don't know if that's your perspective, if that if that was the kind of launch point for bigger mm. and better things, but I, I guess I'd love to understand how that all came about. Through the power of, I guess, the, the network that I that we built up since, uh, since I started freelancing back in 1997, um, we were recommended uh, by a number of people to Tesco. Uh, Tesco had inquired with, I think, I think about five London-based agencies to, uh, to pitch for this, this mobile product. It was the grocery experience. Um, and so we were the, the kind of last ditch, um, I think the last ditch effort. The wild card. The, wa no, the, the wild word card. I was thinking yes. of, yeah. So we, the, the team at the time were, were, we were four people and and so we just we went in to Tesco. We pitched a vision of where the uh, the, retail, the the Tesco grocery retail experience on a small screen could and should be, and um, said to them that this experience will be the preferred experience for your digitally orientated customers over your standard web experience. And they smiled at us, <laughs> and we smiled at them. Oh, bless! And um, yes, but um, I think it's credit to um, 
a few key people within Tesco.com. Mm. Uh, the grocery application from start date to, to completion, it was about 12 months actually. It wasn't 12 months worth of work, yeah. but- um, Research and trialing and stuff like that. Yes, yeah. uh, and uh, <clears throat> for, for Tesco, it took them a one week to make the, the money back on the whole project. Um, that's, I mean, it's a great story, isn't it? And like you say, you know, credit to Tesco yeah. for, to, for risk, you know, taking a risk yeah. with <clears> a <throat> small company. Experiment. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think, you know, an interesting kind of takeaway for us is the, the kind of message that sends to these more established, larger, mm. bloated agencies who are uh, kind of going, uh, other, uh, are normally the typical first port of call mm. for a big corporate. They yeah. want to put their money into like their attached agency or people that they've worked with before because it's low yeah. risk. So I, I guess there's a real shockwave there to, for people to suddenly wake up to the fact that actually, you know, um, a fairly unestablished, you know, um, agency yep. can just suddenly eat their lunch. Yep. So, uh, you know, those, the, those, those, that complacency is just gone. Yeah, and, and the thing that makes so much sense for me is that it was a research-led thing. Mm. It was innovation-led. It yeah. wasn't, we know that this is the next big thing, that mobile yeah. retailing needs to be like this, and here's a big spec for it. They yep. may well have, you know, acted normally and gone to a yeah, bigger yeah. company, but because it was research-led, they had to find somebody that was yeah. agile enough and small enough and, and understood that simplifying yeah. thing and, and knew the domain, the technology domain of mobile. And mm. a few years ago, that you know, there are now quite a few agencies that might yeah. fit that bill, yeah. but at the time, mm. there weren't. We wouldn't be where we are without, without our network, and there's a few key individuals that have helped us greatly over time. Is James um, Parton one of them? <laughs> James Parton uh, does play a part in that. Uh, uh, there's Helen Keegan, oh, yeah. uh, technicist on, on Twitter, yeah. Twitter, who has played an immense part in, in helping us along the way. Mm. Um, so, um, Excellent. Yeah. So, so, but I think that's a really good piece of kind of insight there. If you're starting a business, it do, you can't just sit there in your kind of little own world creating great software because mm. if you don't get out there you don't meet the people you don't socialize you don't get to kind of build that personal brand mm. you're not going to win these right. pitches right you know that uh, that's the way business is done these days right yeah. if, even though kind of by its nature mobile apps is international the actual industry itself is surprisingly small so the end of another hashbang tv episode Episode four in the can. Yep. Uh, quick chat about t-shirts. You haven't made an effort this week. Well, I kind of have. I mean, this is still banned merchandise, right? Even yeah. though it's not a t-shirt. But it's the Sisters of Mercy again. So I've, yeah. I'm kind of overdoing that yeah. a little bit now. Yeah. Linked to the mission from last week. Yeah. Does it yeah. have Sisters are doing it for themselves on the back? No. no. Just, a, just a hood. Okay. And a, a little logo. Wonderful. But yeah. So I, as I said, I need to go to a gig just to stock up on t-shirts because I'm out now. Right. Unlike you. That's right. I still have loads of uh, tech teachers. So I've gone tech this week. Uh, original Code Camp from Orange 2002. Uh, the first one, those people descended onto uh, a French town, were given a tent and a, and a sleeping bag and actually a hotel room sleeping. Uh, and it was, it was massive. I think there were, I think there were like 500 people there over uh, over a weekend. And you know, it was it, it was interesting. It was an early big company interested in sort of so say hacking lots of talks and so stuff you've like that. always been an innovator i have always been ahead of the curve uh and uh, yeah i like my orange code camp t-shirt it's got um, the orange brand and crew on the back and i i don't get to wear that stuff anymore so it's good <laughs> i'm glad you're enjoying it so this was before um orange partner and all that kind of stuff i think it was organized by orange partner the the early the early organization okay and yeah. that's still that's still going right? yeah, 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 yeah 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 still part of orange group i think mm, interesting so, yep yeah. So that's it then. We've uh, we've worked hard to get the show down on the video uh, play length. So that's thanks to the amazing editing work of uh, Verk. <laughs> Where's the work. Come from? They'll probably edit this out. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Alpha Punk. So yeah, Alpha Punk. Alpha yeah. Punk. They're so, the company that uh, spend tireless, tireless time editing. I think we call it the uh, the video to make it shorter than mm. recorded. Uh, and they also produce the podcast. So yeah, thanks to Alpha Punk. Yeah, yeah. So if you're watching this on YouTube and bizarrely want to hear more from us, go check out the podcast, which is going to be longer. Yeah. That'll probably run 20, 30 minutes, maybe even forty. Yeah. So, more, uh, more detail from Anthony Rebo. Yeah. Who's our yeah. Guest. Ex extended stuff from Anthony. That's where you're going to learn about our bees, terms mites and ants so that's recommended listening <laughs> what a teaser yes yes cool so till next time cheers guys